Hi everyone. Now we are going to discuss about a topic called infection. Before going into the concept of infection, just have some terminology, then we'll move to the infection. So, what is meant by a parasite? A microorganism that lives at the expense of another organism that is host is going to be called as a parasite. So all the microorganisms are going to reside in us and damaging us. So obviously we call the microorganisms as parasites. Then what is a parasitism? So the relationship between the host that means us that means either the animal, human or the plant uh, acting as a host and the microorganism which are causing the diseases and acting as a parasite is going to be called as parasitism. So in simple, the relationship between the host and parasite is going to be called as parasitism. Then coming to our concept, what is meant by infection? When this parasite is growing and multiplying within or on a host and the host is going to be said to have an infection. So a pathogen causes a disease by a process called as infection. Okay, we will discuss in detail. Just remember the definitions here. Then infectious disease. So there is a difference between the infection. So the infection means just entry, then lodgement and the multiplying of the pathogen in a host is going to be called as an infection. And if you are going to have the symptoms regarding of this infection, then we call as a disease. Then what is an infectious disease? A disease caused to the host by the presence of a parasite organism or its products may be toxins or some other then it is known as infectious disease or diseases a disease caused to the host by the presence of parasite organism or its products is known as infectious disease then pathogen what is a pathogen so the parasite that produces this infectious diseases is going to be called as a pathogen. Then what is meant by pathogenicity? The ability of a pathogen to cause the infectious diseases is going to be called as pathogenicity. So just remember all these terminologies which are very important in the concern of medical microbiology uh, diseases all the things okay. So let's move to the concept of uh, infection that we have to discuss in detail what is an infection, what are the types of infections all these things. Now Coming to the infection, it can be defined as a process of uh, lodgement and multiplication of a parasitic organism within or on a host is called as infection. That means the entry of a pathogen into a host and its lodgement, that means it has to stay in the host and then it has to multiply. So entry, lodgement and multiplication together we call it as a infection, so which have to occur in a host. Then what is an infectious disease? Now only I said this can be defined as any change from a state of health. So that means generally we are healthy until an infection occurs but when an infection enters into our body and if we are going to find any change from the state of health in which part that means in a specific part or the whole body of the host which is not capable of carrying on its normal functions under the influence of a parasite or its products is going to be considered as infectious diseases. So we can define this infectious diseases as any change from a state of health in which part that means part of a body or the all of the host body is not capable of carrying on its normal functions under the influence of parasite or its products is going to be called as infectious disease or diseases. And this, remember, this infection is going to be a multi-step process. That means it is not going to just as a single as we are discussing. It is a multi-step process. Okay, that I will tell you in detail now. So any disease to cause a successful infection or uh, to induce infectious disease, a pathogen must be able to have all these things. That means initially it should be transported to the host. That means it is present outside the host. So it has to be transported into the host 
Then after entry, it have to adhere. That means it have to attach to our uh, mucous membranes, all those things. And then it have to colonize or invade the host. After invading, that means it has lodgement. And then after that, it have to multiply or grow and complete its life cycle on or in the host. And then initially, evade host defense mechanism. So it must be able to evade the host uh, uh, defense mechanism also then only it can do all these things isn't it then it should possess the mechanical chemical or molecular ability to damage the host so if it is going to have all these characters then it will have the successful infection and induces the infectious diseases okay so let's see the uh, all the steps the multiple step process in the infection process in the diagrammatical representation so any source of pathogen, it may be a virus, bacteria or whatever it may be. So here are the sources of pathogen and how they are going to be transported either by the air or the water or the food, whatever it may be the sources of pathogen. The first step in the development of infectious diseases is the initial transport of the pathogen to the host. So it has to be transported inside the host. Then pathogens are transmitted as I told you, by direct contact or air, water, food, vectors or organism that transmit the pathogen from one host to the other. So like our vectors, mosquitoes, all these things. And some sort of uh, even inanimate objects that harbor and transmit the pathogens also. Okay. Then after being transmitted to an appropriate host, the pathogen must be able to adhere to the host and colonize host cells and tissues so it have to adhere and then it have to colonize and grow in more number that is multiplication of the organism should occur now the colonization is not as simple as we are discussing it depends upon the ability of the pathogen to complete successful with the host normal microbiota for essential nutrients as well as uh, surface attachment sites now these pathogens specifically attached to the surface uh, that is host surface attachment sites it is not going to attach wherever it wants it is going to attach only to the uh, certain attachment sites where it is going to be and these adherence factors okay are one reason for this specificity then after entry into the host cells and tissues is a specialized strategy used by many pathogens that means they are not going to easily come as in exit and get in they are going to have a specialized strategy uh, to enter into the host so how it is going to be the pathogens often penetrates the host epithelium after attachment to the epithelial surface so when it is going to attach to our epithelial surface it should have actively penetrate through this that is host epithelial uh, epithelium. Now this uh, penetration can be accomplished through production of some lytic substances that alter the host tissue either by attacking the ground substance that is the basement membranes of uh, integuments and intestinal linings or degrading the carbohydrate protein complexes between the cells or on the surface or disrupting the cell surfaces so this is how it is able to have the invasiveness so once it is done pathogens can uh, gain entry by passive mechanism for example they can even enter through the small breaks lesions wound abrasions or burns even when you're having any burn or arthropod vectors made small wounds once inside the epithelium after entering the pathogen may penetrate to deeper tissues and continue disseminating throughout the body of the host now after entry after multiplication they are going to disseminate throughout the host body now a successful pathogen must grow and reproduce within the host for this reason it must find an appropriate environment like uh, its nutrients then ph temperature redox potentials etc and even some pathogens invade specific cells in which they grow and multiply that means they will choose only a certain uh, type of cells in which they can grow okay so finally after this uh, colonization and the growth either they are going to damage by the toxicity process that means releasing the 
um, metabolites that is their products or by the invasiveness that means they are going to colonize and multiply and they are going to damage our tissues and the cells all the organs and cause the diseases so these are all the multiple step process or the various stages in the infection and the pathogenesis okay so now let's move to the types of uh, infections so we are having the different types of infections here we are having a very little account of them okay let's have a glance of it so here the first type of the infection is abscesses so as we know the nature of an infection may vary widely with respect to location severity and number of parasitic organisms involved so if you want to have a infection that infection is going to depend on three factors one is the location that means where it is present then the severity how much severe it is and the number of parasitic organisms involved so if you are having a less number you will have a less effect if you are having a more number then obviously you will have the more effect okay considering all these into account we are having the various types of infections as we are going to discuss now okay now let's uh, start with the abscesses the first one a localized infection with a collection of pus surrounding by an inflamed inflamed area so here you can see the picture where you can uh, have the observation called as abscess then coming to the acute infection so the acute infection is going to be of a short but relatively severe course of infection the best one is our common cold which is going to be of influenza virus and rhino virus then next coming to the bacteremia so bacteremia means the presence of viable bacteria in the blood so normally our blood should not have any pathogens but if the bacteria is going to be present in the free flow of blood then we call that condition as bacteremia then moving to the next type of infection is chronic infection so here obviously chronic means that the infection is going to persist over a long period so example is hiv cancer your asthma and algemeria disease and dementia so these are all going to be of a chronic infections which are going to persist over a long period okay and then coming to the covert infection so covert infections are such type of the infections which do not have any clinical symptoms okay so those are called as a subclinical infections examples are going to be bordetella pertussis that is whooping cough all those things then coming to the cross infection cross means so a new infection acquired by a patient while already suffering from a disease is going to be called as cross infection so these things we can observe mainly in the surgical things that is surgical wound infections during the surgery process and urinary tract infections where often being exp uh, uh, exposed to some sort of uh, infected uh, uh, catheters all those things okay so there you are going to have the cross infection so already a patient is suffering with one disease so he, he is going to get uh, another new infection so such kind of infection is called as cross infection then focal infection a condition where due to infection or sepsis at localized sites such as appendix or tonsils generalized effects are produced like sinusitis uh, that is sinusitis dental caries and genital urinary tract are examples of this focal infection that means it is going to be uh, assigned to only one particular location or region is going to be called as focal infection so then moving to the other type that is fulminating infection infection occurs suddenly and the infectious agent multiplies with great intensity that is going to be called as fulminating infection so examples are going to be of infections of the brain such as rabies meningococcal meningitis or the best examples of uh, fulminating infection so suddenly uh, it will appear and at the same time rapidly the infection is going to be of having the uh, great intensity such type of the infections are called as fulminating infections then coming to the latent infection infection that persists in tissue for long periods during most of which symptoms do not manifest that means they are going to reside in the body but we don't recognize that we had so on so disease or infection such type of the infections are called as latent infection example is the herpes simplex virus and varicella zoster virus mm -hmm. then coming to the localized infection obviously localized means restricted to a limited region 
or to one or more anatomical areas is going to be called as localized infection where we can consider the abscesses also comes under this one. Then nosocomial infection. So obviously this is also called as hospital acquired infection. We had a detailed discussion on this uh, in one of the part. You can go through them. Okay. So the infection that develops during a stay at a hospital or other clinical care facilities is going to be called as nosocomial infection. See here, you can see that microorganisms are playing in and around the hospital. Okay, so this is a cartoon, just you can enjoy it. Then coming to the primary infection, the initial infection with a parasite is going to be called as primary infection. Then pyogenic Pyo means, pyro means fever causing, pyo means pus formation. Infection that results in the pus formation is going to be called as pyogenic. Mainly this is going to be of neonatal meningitis. Okay. And then reinfection. The subsequent infections by the same parasite, the continuous uh, of having the cold occurrence, all these things is going to be called as reinfection. Okay. By the same parasite in the host is going to be called as reinfection. Then coming to the secondary, so primary means you are having the uh, initial exposure with the parasite, then that is going to be called as primary. Secondary, when a parasite sets up an infection in a host whose resistance is lowered by a pre-existing infectious diseases is going to be called as secondary infection. That means you are already having some sort of infection in you and you are fighting with it such that your resistance is getting lowered. And because of this, some other pathogen is going to attack you where it is going to be called as secondary infection. So these are all the different types of uh, infections that we are supposed to read. Okay, so in this part of infection, we had gone through the definition of the infection, then what are the various stages in the infection and the pathogenesis process, then various types of infections. I hope so you understood very well. Thank you.